What do you mean by the term photolithography? Well, my name is Jayashi Ramju. Welcome to the Backbench Engineering community, where I make engineering easy for you. So, let us ask yourself an obvious question. What do you actually mean by the term photolithography? Well, let's run out. So, the word photolithography. So, the word photolithography means printing with light. So, if we have a particular template, which has got a lot of shapes inside this, some shapes like this, then photolithography is a process by which these shapes from this particular template are transferred onto a particular substrate with the help of light. With the help of a light source, these shapes are transferred onto a particular substrate. This simple process is what you refer to as photolithography. So this technique is used in manufacturing applications with dimensions less than a millimeter. That is, for manufacturing things that are very, very, very tiny of the range less than a millimeter. So how do we achieve this? How do we achieve photolithography. So, in order to achieve photolithography, there are a sequence of steps that we have to follow. What are the sequence of steps? Well, let's find out. So, the first step is that we take a particular silicon wafer. It is on top of this silicon wafer, we need to print certain shapes. So, for this, we first take a silicon wafer. So, now here, on top of this silicon wafer, we'll be printing certain shapes that we require. So therefore, for printing things over here, the first agenda for us is that we have to make this surface clean. So in order to make this particular surface clean, we now treat this particular wafer with hydrogen peroxide. So when the silicon wafer is chemically treated with hydrogen peroxide, it cleans this particular silicon wafer. It removes any contaminations or impurities that would be present on top of this particular silicon wafer. So now, once we treat this particular silicon wafer with hydrogen peroxide, and once we obtain a clean surface over here, we now place a layer of silicon on top of this particular silicon wafer. Here, a layer of silicon is now deposited on top of this particular silicon wafer. So next, next what we do is that we have to make this particular surface adhesive. So, for us to make this particular surface on top of this particular silicon layer to be adhesive, we treat it with something referred to as HMDS. HMDS or hexamethyl disilazine. This is now placed on top of this particular silicon layer so as to make this particular silicon layer adhesive. So once this particular silicon layer becomes adhesive, then we can remove this HMDS and now what we do is that we now rotate this silicon wafer consisting of this particular silicon layer. This is now rotated along this particular axis. And now, once this is rotated, a particular material referred to as a photoresist is now coated on top of this particular silicon layer. So, it is for the purpose of coating this particular photoresist we had to make this particular silicon layer adhesive over here. So now here the silicon wafer was rotated so that we get a uniform layer of photoresist over here. A photoresist is nothing but a material that reacts with light. It is simply just a light sensitive material. So now we coat a layer of photoresist on top of this particular silicon layer. So here while coating it with photoresist, it is rotated at a speed of 1200 to 4800 rotations per minute to around say 30 to 60 seconds. So once we do that, we get a layer of photoresist with a thickness of about 0 0.5 to 2.5 micrometers. So once we have a layer of photoresist on top like this, we do something referred to as edge band removal. Edge band removal is done to remove the excess photoresist that are present over here. So with the help of a process called edge band removal, all the excess photoresist is removed. And then after that, we pre-bake this by applying heat. This is done in order to drive off the excess photoresist solvent. 
So now we have a uniform layer of photoresist on top of this particular silicon layer. Now is the interesting part. Now what we do is that we now take a particular mask which contains certain shapes like this. These shapes resemble a particular chip's geometry. So now here we take a particular mask and it is based on these shapes that are present on this particular mask. We need these shapes to be present on this particular photoresist. So for that we take a particular UV light source. And with the help of a particular condenser lens, we now apply this UV light source on top of this particular mask like this. So when this UV light source falls on this particular mask, only light falls along the shapes that are present inside this particular mask. So therefore, light falls like this. So here, this mask allows this UV light only to fall on this particular photoresist through the shapes that are present here. So therefore, here we place a particular projection lens that now projects this particular UV light on top of this particular photoresist. Now what we observe is that as this particular UV light falls on top of this particular photoresist, it now chemically reacts and these same shapes are now formed on top of this particular photoresist material like this. So we can now observe that whatever shapes we had in this particular mask, the same shapes are obtained on this particular photoresist. So here now half of the job is done. We have the shapes of this particular mask on top of this particular photoresist. Now we can remove all this apparatus here. This is all that we require. So now once we obtain this, we can now remove these excess photoresist portions. So here that depends on two things. That depends on the type of photoresist that we use. There are two types of photoresist we can use. A positive photoresist and a negative photoresist. When we use a positive photoresist, all the portions that are exposed to light gets washed away when we wash it with a particular solvent. And now on the contrary, if we use a negative photoresist, the portions that are not exposed by light gets washed away when we wash it using a particular solvent. So now here, based on the type of photoresist that we've used, when we wash this particular photoresist with a particular solvent, it now, either the exposed portion or the unexposed portion gets washed away. So now, let us assume that we have used a negative photoresist. In such kind of a case, the unexposed portion gets washed away and we get something like this. We get something like this. That is, whatever shapes we had in that previous mask, we have obtained it over here. So next, next what we have to do is that, along the same shape, we need the same shape present on this particular silicon layer that is present on top of this particular silicon wafer. So therefore, we use the process of etching for the purpose of now creating these same shapes on this particular silicon layer. So therefore, for the purpose of this, a particular chemical agent is now used to remove the uppermost layer of the substrate in the areas which are not protected by these particular photoresses. So with the help of this particular chemical agent, what we do is that we now obtain something like this. This reveals a silicon wafer to the unprotected areas. So now once we obtain this, once we have converted the silicon layer into these shapes, now we do not require this photo resist. So for that, using a liquid resist stripper, we now strip away this particular photo resist layer. So this liquid resist stripper, what it does is that it chemically alters this particular photo resist material so that it loses its adhesion from this particular silicon layer. So now we have obtained silicon shapes on top of this particular silicon wafer. This is photolithography. That is transferring shapes from a particular mask on top of a particular substrate. So on top of this particular silicon wafer, we have a silicon layer. So here we have only silicon here. This is silicon and this is silicon. So therefore, we have now obtained a silicon wafer with shapes 
printed on a silicon layer. So now this is just one layer of shapes. We can now print multiple layer of shapes on top of this. So let us assume that we need to print multiple layer of shapes. Then what we do is that, what we do is that we now fill this with silicon dioxide, SiO2. So SiO2 is now deposited on top of this particular silicon layer and it is then polished to create the first layer of this particular chips geometry. So once this SiO2 is deposited, then this entire same process can be repeated again and again and again to obtain multiple layers. So once we formed multiple layers, and finally this SiO2 or silicon dioxide can be simply just washed away. This can be just washed away like this. And here now we have just pure silicon over here like this. That is, we have successfully printed multiple layers of shapes on top of this particular silicon wafer. This thus is simply what you refer to as photolithography. And these are the sequence of steps that we must follow in order to attain photolithography. As simple as that guys, there's nothing more to it. This thus is simply what you refer to as photolithography. As simple as that guys, there's nothing more to it. So I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of what I refer to as photolithography. And if you guys found this video informative, please do hit the like button and join this community by hitting that subscribe button. We'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.